All right, roofing. So back in the day, Ursha Biotecture, or they were probably called Solar Survival back then, they used to get a whole bunch of guys and manually just pick those Vegas up and carry them up onto the roof. Um, I only have myself and Seabass here, so I got a crane out, and you could see uh, Seabass strapping the, uh, uh, the crane to the Vega there, and then he has, he's got a strap that he controls the positioning of the Vega as it's going up, and then I'm up on top of the roof ready to receive it, uh, placing them down like you can see here. So now we're up on the northeast corner of the roof, and I wanted to show you the plating that goes on top of the bond beam. Uh, we're using 2x6 treks up here uh, to plate the bond beam. Uh, the bond beam actually you can't see, it's right beneath this rubber here, which I'll explain in a second. But uh, the bottom plate, which is under here, it is anchored to the bond beam with uh, an anchor bolt that's set in the concrete before it dries. And that's bolted down, and then this top trex plate is screwed down into it. Uh, the purpose of the plating here is to receive the, uh, the Vegas. Uh, so it sits on something that you can actually anchor into. Um, and it's a moisture prone area, so we're using the treks because moisture from the ground can come in here and rot out uh, even pressure treated plywood over time. So uh, what you see here is EPDM rubber. And the purpose of this is to come up underneath this overhang of roof and up the back of the roof so that moisture from the ground just cannot penetrate and get in and rot these vegas or anything else in the roof. Um, this whole, the whole, you know, up to the, the bottom half of these vegas, it's all buried under earth. Uh, so that moisture is in direct, would be in, would otherwise be in direct contact with the, with the bottom of the roof here if it wasn't for this EPDM rubber. Um, and the way it's been attached here is the EPDM rubber has been sandwiched between the two Trex plates, which makes a, for a really tight pressure seal and no moisture can get through that. And also it holds the, uh, the EPDM rubber in very securely. Once the Vegas are set on the plating, you need to get them all level with one another. So in order to do that, you need to shim them. And we do that uh, with treks, pieces of uh, two by treks. Um, and some of those uh, shims we need to actually cut uh, to exact sizes, uh, to like basically down to an eighth of an inch to get all those uh, Vegas uh, level with one another. So in this case, we had to actually lift up uh, a Vega. So to do that, I used a car jack and um, that brought the Vega up into position, and then we were able to shim underneath it. <laughs> this is Ted's uh, extended arbor bit. Yeah. Nice yeah. piece of rebar right there. Wait, what are you looking at? My wiener or the, the bit? Don't ask any questions. <laughs> Just look pretty for the camera. Dan, don't ask. I won't tell. <laughs> so once those Vegas are set on shims, uh, and you can see the shims underneath that Vega there, we need to take a long arbor bit and drill down through the Vega into the shims, into the plating on top of the bond beam. And that uh, will allow us to drive a piece of rebar. You can see right here, that's the top of the rebar being banged into the um, flat flush with the top of the Vega. Uh, we can drive a piece of rebar down through the Vega, in, through the shims, down into the plating. And that will uh, secure that Vega um, into the, the plating of the house. Once those Vegas are all secured and all level, we got to cut the ends of the Vegas off to make them all flush with one another. That's going to allow us to put our, our rim joists on and attach our trusses and basically box the edges of the roof of the house in. Once the Vegas are all set in place, level with one another, and the ends have been cut off flush, we can start with our decking. And what you're looking at here is our one by eight pine decking uh, finished on four sides. Uh, we, want, we got it finished on four sides because when you're inside the house, when you look up at the ceiling, what you're actually seeing, the finished ceiling is the Vegas and then this pine decking right above that. Um, so here we're nailing uh, the decking into the Vegas. And then when we hit uh, an end, we have to snap a chalk line and then just take a circular saw and just cut off the ends of the uh, one by eight. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about prepping for can wall with uh, what we call porcupining. Uh, porcupining is basically just nails in the, the side of the material that you're gonna be laying can wall against. So in this area right here between these two vegas, we're gonna be laying can wall right up to the top here. 
And in order to lock that can wall nice and solid into these vigas would be to porcupine by putting nails right into the side here, stagger it all the way down on both sides. So when that concrete dries, right around those nails, it just locks it to these vigas. So to get started, we are going to use some six mil plastic right around the viga here. Reason for that is because there's water in the concrete. We don't want any of that water moisture getting into the vigas and possibly rotting it out. So we run that plastic all along the area the can wall is going to hit the viga. And then the porcupine, we just start taking our nails and we put them, we just drive them right in, nail them right into the viga. And we stagger every couple inches all the way down here. Oh my god, I just discovered the wonders of the palm nailer. Check this out. Ha ha! So begins the horrors of trying to cover the roof. Every time we're done with a day or when we see rain coming, we gotta throw plastic up over the entire roof and then throw tires up there. And what you're looking at isn't even nearly how many tires we end up with. We have to have about probably 50 to 75 tires up there to hold that tarp down. The winds out here are totally insane. Here you're also looking at the finished porcupining of all the vigas in the back of the house. So after those vigas are all porcupined, we need to put in our can wall between the vigas. So here Pete is uh, putting in the cement mortar um, with the cans in there, filling up those voids. So we do one on one side of the bond beam and one on the other, and uh, once, those are, once those can walls come up flush with the tops of the vigas, we put in some, bat, some bats insulation in between and that uh, eliminates uh, uh, temperature transfer and also condensation on the inside of the house. Mm -hmm. 